Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay, today in Toronto. And today on June 13th, the World Justice Project released the Rule of Law Index, the World Justice Project, apparently funded by, mostly by the Gates Foundation. And they assess countries around the world based on the account, government accountability, transparency, and, and such, all the things they say make up the rule of law. And a lot of the news reports spent time on Venezuela and how it was depicted in the report. Here's a, a few quotes from the report. First of all, it says Venezuela was rated the worst performer in the world in terms of accountability and effective checks on executive power. Corruption appears to be widespread, ranking 54th. Crime and violence are common, ranking 64th. Government institutions, according to this report, are non-transparent, and the criminal justice system is ineffective and subject to political influence. And it goes on. The country also displays serious flaws in guaranteeing respect for fundamental rights, in particular, freedom of opinion and expression, and the right to privacy. Now joining us from New York City to talk about this report and rights in Venezuela is Gregory Wilpert. He's the founder of the website, VenezuelaAnalysis.com. Thanks for joining us, Greg. Thanks for having me again. So, what do you make of, this, uh, make of the report? Do you think this is a fair assessment of the state of things in Venezuela? Yes, it's a pretty damning report. Um, there's a couple of issues, though, that I would uh, look at. Well, one is uh, exactly the methodology. I actually went through the methodology of this report, and it seems to be very uh, thorough and very carefully done. Uh, however, a large portion of it is based on expert interviews. I think almost uh, over half of the uh, factors that they analyzed were the result of expert interviews. And that is always a problematic issue, especially with regard to Venezuela. Because what you have in Venezuela, I think, is a, um, a situation where um, a, uh, the, the old elites were basically kicked out of office completely in Venezuela. And um, if you do expert interviews, the, almost all of the experts um, belong to, in one way or another, are affiliated with these elites in Venezuela. And so it, um, it's very problematic. They tend to be, have a very strong bias against the government. The other thing is a large portion of the report uh, or of the analysis was done uh, on the basis of opinion polls, which I think is uh, perfectly legitimate. Uh, however, I would uh, point out that there are other opinion polls that actually contradict um, these results. Uh, the most significant one being the Latino Barometro, which is a, uh, an analysis that is done throughout Latin America every year and receives funding from the World Bank. I mean, this is a uh, serious uh, effort to, uh, to study public opinion with regard to politics and these exactly almost the same issues, actually. And uh, in that one, Venezuela does very well every year. So um, it would be interesting to compare and contrast why this difference. The, the uh, report uh, focuses a lot on this issue of uh, the right to express public opinion and fundamental rights. And in terms of media, there's been a lot of attention on television. I mean, to what extent does opposition television still act, uh, active or thrive? I, I know when I was in Venezuela you know, a few years ago, uh, most of the television, in fact, seemed to be opposition television. What, what is the state of that now? I, things aren't uh, quite as uh, one-sided or lopsided as they were <clears throat> uh, five or six years ago, when indeed most of the television stations were very, very anti-Chavez. Now uh, there are two or three major television stations which are more balanced uh, in terms of their coverage. Of course, there was this controversial issue where a you know, vehemently anti-Chavez station uh, did not have its uh, license renewed uh, and therefore is off the air. Um, and uh, but there's still a major news, 24-hour news channel that is very anti-Chavez and is constantly and continues to be very anti-Chavez, and they're still on the air. And so I, the reason I say things are more balanced is because uh, the state, of course, has its own TV channels, and so it can, tries to counteract them. Uh, but uh, people who uh, are uh, affiliated with the opposition really have no problem getting onto television, either on the 24-hour news channel or on one of the pr other private uh, channels, which don't do have that much news coverage, but certainly um, give uh, the opposition equal time with the government. And so therefore, I think uh, one cannot say that, uh, that there's any problem with freedom of expression in Venezuela. Well, uh, what do you make of the other issues in the report? The, 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 they zero in on lack of accountability in government, yeah. and particularly lack of limits on executive power. 
Yeah, the one on, uh, with the lack of limits on executive power is probably the most serious uh, issue, uh, because uh, that is certainly true because uh, the, all of the branches of government are controlled by uh, Chavez supporters. Uh, and of course, that has resulted in the accusation over and over again that uh, there is no uh, separation of powers. Now, um, the thing is, I wouldn't say that Chavez directly controls or even indirectly controls these other branches of power uh, of, of government. However, um, it's true that they do not exercise a uh, thorough control of uh, the executive because they are constituted by su his supporters. Now, um, how, the big question, I think, though, is how did that come about? Whose fault is it that uh, Venezuela is in such a situation where there is no effective um, check on uh, the executive? And I would say that the opposition bears at least as much responsibility for this as Chavez. And you have to look basically at what happened, how this came about. And one of the main ways it came about is that in 2005, the opposition boycotted legislative elections. And it's the legislature... So as a result, actually, the, uh, the legislature had a complete free hand in naming the other branches of government, which is its responsibility, uh, because it consisted entirely of um, Chavez supporters. And so, of course, they put uh, the legislature, the pro-Chavez legislature, put pro-Chavez people in the other branches of government, whether it's the Electoral Council, the Supreme Court, uh, or what's known as the uh, prosecutorial power is what I actually call it, uh, or the moral power, which is the attorney general's office, which is independent, actually. Um, this would not have happened if the opposition had participated, because they would have been able to prevent a two-thirds majority in those 2005 elections. Things are going to change, though, because now the opposition has prevented, uh, in the last legislative elections, it does have uh, over a third of uh, the seats, and therefore it can prevent a two-thirds, or it has prevented a two-thirds majority in the National Assembly. So next time it comes around, to name um, positions for these um, these other branches in government, um, the government or the Chavez forces will have to um, compromise with the opposition in order to name people to those positions. The, so, but the, so in other words, one of the other charges is the use of political influence uh, in the criminal justice system. Is there legitimate issues there? Yes, absolutely. Uh, the criminal justice system is is in terrible shape. It continues uh, to be in terrible shape. It was that way before Chavez got elected. He had promised to fix it, and unfortunately, that is one of the main areas that Chavez uh, has not made uh, hardly any progress at all. Uh, it continues to be a highly politicized criminal justice system, uh, and that is, uh, I think, one of the uh, one of, a serious problem. Um, and, and it also has, a, has something to do with the fact that the courts are, uh, sorry, the prison system is completely overcrowded and uh, the courts are completely underfunded and therefore also very susceptible still to, uh, to corruption. And what about the issue of uh, government transparency, accountability? I mean, I guess this partly speaks to what you were talking about before, that the other branches of government. But there yeah. was supposed to be this sort of new process developed, uh, people's councils, uh, sort of part of, this, part of the Bolivarian process or Bolivarian revolution. Do they actually have any power in terms of uh, holding uh, government accountable? I know there's, in the barrios themselves there's been a lot of critique about how money gets spent in the barrios. Yeah, that's, um, I mean, it's, it's I, I mean, as far as the transparency issue is concerned, I think that's something one would have to compare and uh, I, with other countries. Uh, as far as I can tell, I, one can generally find out how money is being spent. I mean, I've been doing research on Venezuela for a long time, and generally uh, one can track down most of the expenditures. But um, it is, of course, if, if uh, an issue that, uh, that there is uh, this uh, lack of uh, control by the other um, branches of government. So when so when the executive decides not to disclose something, there's nobody who really pushes or forces them to disclose the numbers, and that's certainly an issue. Um, as far as um, the uh, um, the uh, well, in corruption in general is concerned, that uh, like I said before, it is certainly also an ongoing problem uh, that that also cannot be resolved as long as uh, there's no effective control on I mean, the all, all this is comparable, but they're rating Venezuela as the worst in Latin America on many of these issues. 
but but I have to say, I, I, from what I know of Venezuela, I find this a little bit remarkable in the sense that uh, are there journalists that you know of? Or, uh, do we know of journalists who have either been arrested or killed in Venezuela? No, I mean, this is uh, th those aspects, like I said, freedom of press and freedom of opinion and all of that is absolutely uh, absurd to say that Venezuela is one of the worst or the worst. Actually, I would say even not make the opposite argument uh, that it's one of the best, <laughs> just given the fact that uh, it ha that Venezuela has a uh, a government of a very uh, let's say a basic a very strong left tendency uh, where um, where there's still a very and you don't have I mean it's one of the most leftist governments in Latin America um, and so of course uh, and and still the opposition has uh, really as far as I can tell a complete freedom. Uh, to say whatever it wants. You just need to open up any newspaper in Venezuela and uh, one of the main commentators, for example, Teodoro Petkov, is constantly lambasting the president uh, and calling him all kinds of names uh, that uh, were people would have, if you, if you saw the news reports, you'd think he'd be in jail a long time ago. Um, but he's not. He's, com he's completely free to say whatever he wants. Uh, and many other journalists like this as well. Mata Col Colomina, somebody who has a uh, a prime time radio program every morning, she's blasting the president uh, in ways that you would never hear in the United States, and certainly not uh, in a country such as Colombia. Yeah, I have to say, I find it odd when you compare it to, say, even a country like Mexico, where dozens of journalists have been killed and other countries in Latin America, J just on that one score, it seems a kind of a, a, a very uh, bizarre uh, to put Venezuela after that. Not to say there aren't a lot of serious issues that it does raise about Venezuela. Any, any final thoughts, Greg? Yeah, I think this, uh, these kinds of things are very subjective, and that's why they're based, I think, to a large extent on uh, the expert interviews, which I said are, uh, are, is a very questionable methodology in the case of Venezuela. Uh, with other issues um, that where you can do more uh, opinion surveys and and quantitative measures, that might be more valid. But I think in those kinds of issues about freedom of the press or whatever, uh, that's uh, I think it just doesn't work to do this kind of uh, uh, research. Thanks for joining us, Greg. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on the Real News Network.